Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the report for uh, SmackDown 318 at 22. Uh, weeks before WrestleMania, weaker show than should ever be on television, but hey, they're trying and 38 years later I might not be very good at having a uh, wrestling pro product either, but anyway. Um, only really notable thing is the Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns segment, um, which continues to be the best built thing and the only thing really worth watching um, in WWE. Obviously, WrestleMania a couple of weeks away. Uh, SmackDown takes place tonight from North Carolina. Universal Champ Roman Reigns and SmackDown Champ uh, Brock Lesnar colliding tonight. Uh, last week. Lesnar gets his damage in, um, and I mean, ultimately, they air a Scott Hall um, graphic. Uh, they recap Reigns attacking Lesnar last week. Michael Cole notes that uh, Pat McCaffrey isn't allowed to touch Austin Theory and management suggests he apologized to Theory. McCaffrey didn't seem to like the idea of that. Uh, then they go to Roman and Brock. Um, Basically, Lesnar goes from appearing to not appearing because uh, um, he basically is not originally supposed to be there. Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and the Usos slowly walk to the ring. Reigns demands that the fans acknowledge him. Uh, brags about attacking Lesnar at MSG. Heyman interrupts, informs Reigns that weather patterns. Caused Lesnar's fight to be fight to be grounded. Heyman announced that Lesnar wouldn't be at the show tonight. The fans are not happy with this. Reigns freaks out after uh, Heyman wondered what they should do uh, after Lesnar's fight flight lands, um, and then um, Raymond's is freaking. Uh, Reigns is freaking out. Tells Heyman to wrap it up, and they should get out of there. Cole and McCaffrey run down the lineup for the night. In the back, Reigns and the Usos jumped in the car. Suddenly, they hear a horn. Lesnar pulls up on a forklift. Um, and Lesnar drives the forklift into the windows. Uh, back from the break, they showed what happened during commercial. Reigns and the Usos run over a second vehicle, which is conveniently nearby them. Lesnar jumps into the, ri into the ring with the car door and destroys it. He makes fun of Reigns for running and hiding from him. Lesnar notes that he's out for blood and promised to beat Reigns at WrestleMania. I'm really hoping Reigns wins at WrestleMania because I don't want to go back to Brock. Anyway, Shinsei Nakamura and Rick Boggs uh, defeat Lo uh, Los Lotharios. Uh, just under five minutes. They recapped uh, previous angles. Uh, Lotharios do the kiss can as they entered. Nakamura backs Humberto into the corner, falling with a running knee. Humberto gets a side headlock. Nakamura fights back. Angel Garza makes the uh, tag off and ultimately jumps Nakamura um, and then gets control. Heels follow up. Boogs then takes in, runs wild on the heels. Uh, Angel then gives Humberto a press slam. Boogs does 10 reps. Humberto comes off there. Uh, and Boogs then hits the Boogs Cruise on Angel for the win. Uh, they recapped H Happy Corbin, Madcap Moss, Jinder Mahal, and Shanky attacking the Viking Raiders last week. In the back, Megan interviews Corbin and the rest of his friends. Claims there's uh, his plan went according to plan last week. Moss makes a bad joke. But getting hurt, and this goes nowhere, really. Uh, Drew McIntyre, Viking Raiders, defeat Jinder Mahal, Shanky, and Happy Corbin. Uh, in With Madcap Moss, 7 minutes, 12 seconds. Match is fine. Corbin avoids McIntyre, tags out any time he enters the ring. Uh, Cole points out the match is supposed to happen last week. Eric jumps uh, Shanky at the bell. Early advantage, Shanky fights back, tags into Mahal. Back from the break, Mahal is in control. Uh, Chinlock on, on Ivar. Corbin prevents a tag. Corbin beats down Ivar, breaks free. McIntyre runs wild, knocks Mahal out of the ring, hitting a Michinoku driver on Shanky, then hits a Claymore kick for the win. Why this needed to be seven minutes, I have no idea, other than to fill time. They recapped 
Ricochet beating Sami Zayn last week to retain the Intercontinental Championship. In the back, Zayn claimed that he should be champion, not because of Johnny Knoxville. Uh, Zayn promised to go further with things. Sasha Banks and Naomi defeat Rhea Ripley and uh, Lee, uh, Liv Morgan, 11 minutes, 46 seconds. A DQ finish. Uh, tag team championships, Carmella and Queen uh, Zelina. Uh, watch the match from ringside. Commentary Cole pushes that Zelina feels Carmella is too distracted with her boyfriend, Corey Graves. I think is that I, I don't think it's the first time they acknowledge that they're together, but they are acknowledging it more and more. Banks has really advantage running up into the corner arm drag. Morgan then rolls Banks for near fall, trades pins back and forth. Banks and Morgan both go after the drop kick, both have a brief stare down and more shaking Morgan's hand. Uh, Banks rocks Ripley with a knee. To the head, follows up with a head scissors. Ripley and Morgan send things out. Back from the break. Ripley then uh, goes for a vertical suplex. Naomi breaks screen. Naomi avoids Ripley. And a springboard kick. Banks and Morgan tag in at the same time. Banks hits double knees in the corner and hits a meteor to close near fall. Morgan recovers, hits an enziguri. Ripley follows up with a missile drop kick on Banks. For near fall again, um, they go back and forth with a This Is Awesome chant. Banks and Naomi give Ripley a double suplex. Morgan gives gives them a double power bomb. Uh, Natalia and Shayna Baszler run to the ring, attacking everyone for disqualification. Carmella and Zelina jumped in to help Natalia and Baszler. Champions pose next to Baszler and Natalia. Baszler and Natalia. Uh, stand at the cha- stare at the champions and tie points to the WrestleMania sign, and absolutely no one with half a clue cared. Johnny Knoxville responds to Sami Zayn's challenge from earlier. Knoxville noted that he once fought Butterbean and got knocked out. He then strapped himself to a rocket. Knoxville accepted Zayn's challenge and breaks out laughing. Um, Zayn versus Knoxville, anything goes match official for WrestleMania 38. Is this the most pathetically driven WrestleMania ever? I mean, in the sense of Lesnar and Reigns is good. Um, some of the women's stuff that I don't remember. I'm mean, Ronda and Charlotte, I guess, is good. Becky and and um, Bel and Bel Air is decent. But I mean, all the celebrity stuff just to fill out the show to make it seem like something is this really necessary? Anyway, Cole and McCaffrey discuss. Knoxville and Zayn, where Cole gets a message from the back, he informs uh, McCaffrey that maybe McMahon summoned him to the office. McCaffrey knows that they're live on the air. Uh, says, I can't be good news. McCaffrey is decent enough in his segment with Austin Theory. Jumps in the ring, grabs the mic, he mentioned watching professional wrestling for the first time when he was 11 on a Monday night. Fans give him a what chant, but that didn't distract him. McCaffrey recounts that Cole called him to join the commentary team, notes that it's his dream to compete in front of WWE fans, started doing his catchphrases, and uh, Austin Theory interrupts and makes his way to the ring. Uh, McCaffrey notes that McMahon told him to apologize or risk losing the match at WrestleMania. McCaffrey apologized uh, that he beat up Theory and said he's sorry that Theory's a punk. Theory smirks and pushes McCaffrey, uh, and then they go into a brawl situation. Uh, Ridge Holland with uh, Sheamus and Butch defeats Kofi Kingston 852. Why is Ridge Holland, after last week's injury, in the ring a week later? That's just, it's careless, it's disrespectful, it's stupid. No, just no. (coughs) Anyway, Kingston and Holland have a good enough match. Um, they never mention that Pete Dunn is Pete Dunn, although they do mention he going by a different name. Cole and McCaffrey discussed Big E's neck injury from last week. Cole added that Kingston's out for retribution for what happened to Big E. Uh, footage of New Day versus Holland and Sheamus also airs. They showed Big E's messages on social media. Cole, Cole notes that Holland apologizes to Big E and hopes he gets better soon. Why is a heel apologizing? Again, I... Just leave him off TV for a bit. That's the right way to do it. 
Cage he catches him with a kick to the chest. Kingston follows up with a springboard cross body to the floor. So we haven't learned anything from Biggie's injury. We're still doing needless spots that don't need to happen. Um, anyway, Kingston comes back with a back elbow to regain control. Sheamus pulls Kingston out of the ring, hits a clothesline. Holland slows the pace down with a chin lock. Kingston fights to the back, or fights back. Kingston takes Holland down with a clothesline after a boom drop. Sets up Trouble in Paradise, but Holland catches him. Kingston breaks free and climbs the top rope. Sheamus distracts the referee and Butch knocks Kingston off. Referee didn't see the interference, but Sheamus and Butch uh, are sent to the back. Anyway, Holland rolls up Kingston for near fall. Butch then tried to jump him as they were leaving. Sheamus then pulls him out. Holland takes advantage of the distraction and hits the Northern Lights for the win. Uh, Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey segment. They're decent enough segment. However, I don't know that this needs to close the show. Anyway, they recap the feud between the two. Charlotte makes her way to the ring. She notes that she always has a plan. She bragged about slamming Rou- um, Rousey on the hood of a car last week, claiming that um, she's getting revenge for the You Tapped Out chant. Flair claimed that her legacy is bigger than Rousey. She had Rousey would leave. Uh, uh, and have another baby when she loses WrestleMania. The player notes that she's not going anywhere. She says Rousey doesn't have the passion to be a 13-time world champion. Player says she doesn't want to wait until WrestleMania demanded Rousey come to the ring. Uh, Flair gives fans a um, gets a positive reaction for being Team Charlotte in the back. Rousey's walking to the ring. Taylor Braxton approaches. She asks Rousey if she thought. This was a trap. Rousey ignores her and keeps walking. Rousey marches to the ring. Flair's got a kendo stick, and and there's an avoidance there. Rousey recovers, locks on the ankle lock. Flair has another kendo stick, and it's near the timekeeper's table because they're brawling on the outside. Flair then gives Rousey a powerbomb on the announce table, poses over her, and that's the end of SmackDown. Honestly, two weeks from WrestleMania, this is the best they can do. Honestly, quite, quite sad. We'll be back with more right after this.